we talked a lot about I heard a couple of things a lot, but what I, what I realized with talking to Derek just a few minutes ago that um, uh, it's a lot of, it's a different way well, than Will too. It, a lot of things are different, but they're very similar and the same. And uh, one of the things that I really want to kind of talk about is like high performance, right? And in sales um, in particular, whether it's life insurance or whatever, you know, it's, it's sales, right? Like we're in, we're in sales, like you're having a conversation, trying to understand people. Um, and then we use a little bit of persuasion influence to get them to make a decision um, that's good for them, even if they have some fear to get them across the line, right? So we're in the sales position. And um, so I liken that to like professional athletes, right? Where you, so you need to train. And Grant Cardone says this, says it only takes one day to get rusty. Well, there's also um, some leading and lagging, lagging indicators. Like when you go on vacation, has, you know, you try to come back and it just, you just can't get back to it, right? And so uh, that's one of the important things of this is going back to the things that made you write 40, 50K or made you successful or when you were working, whatever your level was that you were proud of, right? Because what happens is, is as the business grows, so does these problems, these things that come up. And, and as business owners, we take them on, right? And it's like... Um, it's business creep. You know how people make more money. They call it lifestyle creep where your expenses start to rise with it. Well, the same thing happens with your business. The responsibility creep comes in. And as a CEO of your business, um, we've got to, uh, to establish what things are important for you to be able to do. And the reason why that's important is because all tasks are not created equal. And... Um, Chris, you'll appreciate this because it's one of those things where if you can quantify what the activity is, then it makes it clear to be able to identify it. So um, I don't know if y'all have seen in the Facebook group, I've posted it multiple times and I talked about it on the last one, which is that 100 units of time. And so when people are like, I've got a lot of things going on and I'm busy, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to track, right? If it, if it doesn't get measured, it doesn't matter. And then you need to sign um, uh, a value to it so that you can assess, is this a task that I should be doing or could I delegate to someone else or can I eliminate it, right? Very, very practical process. But the key is first is being aware that there's a lot of things that I'm doing that isn't moving the needle. And then you've got to start to break down what those things are during the day that are distracting you from your goal. Because... Um, like I said before, like everybody's like, I need to focus. I got my mindset. I need to focus. But um, sometimes we, we, we kind of have the wrong goal. Right. So I always like to use this this analogy of when people try to uh, they, they have the goal of being happy. Right. And they're like, man, I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy. But the problem is, is that they that the goal is wrong. They have the wrong goal. It's, it's not to be happy. Right. Um, the goal of uh, happiness is a byproduct of the thing. So if you want to be happy, the first thing that we need to do is figure out what are the things that make you happy. And as a byproduct of doing those things, then you become happy, right? So if you need to focus, as a, we need to figure out what are the things that are distracting you. Because if we can get rid of those things, right, the opposite of distraction is what? It's focus. So this is how we reverse engineer into that. And we'll get into the goal setting because the first thing that most people don't have before they even do anything is they just don't have a clear attainable goal. And so this is the North Star. More importantly, it's like, where are you going? All right. I'm trying to do this and that. OK, where are you going? What's the goal? And and so first and foremost, most people don't even have this part figured out. Right. Just kind of floating in the wind. And then where are you? Right. We kind of talked about that. You need to know where you are. Right. To know where you're going. And so if we get those two things and then it's like, what's standing in my way? And those are kind of the things we kind of get back to. We talk about falling back in love with the game. It's like we've got all of these things that have crept up, right, that are getting in the way of our goals. And we've got to start to map out um, what is going on. OK, does that make sense, y'all? So um, the first thing is defining what your goal is. And this equation here is just basically how you achieve your goals. It's very simple. I'm just a simple person, which is that your actions plus time equals your goal. And what we do is read, re, you know, this is real simple, like old school. Like everybody remembers this. 
right? It's like you, you have one part of the equation where the first thing that you can really control and figure out is this part right here, right? So if we just say, just put a number here, it's like, okay, right? And then it's, okay, you want to get to 100. Well, let's assign a time to this, right? Because there's no point to just have a goal, right? But we don't attach any time to it, right? And so time is an amazing thing that uh, it, it adds this sense of urgency to things, right? And so uh, I used to recommend this book, uh, Jen Sincero, uh, You're a Badass. I don't know if anybody's heard of it. It's a yellow book. But she, she made a statement in there that said, you, you ever had two weeks to do something and it took you two weeks, right? And so when you assign time to it, it gives you a sense of urgency to get something done. So not only do you need to first figure out what your goal is, you need to assign a time to it, right? And these are the two things that we can kind of fill out. So is it 30 days? Is it 60 days? Is it 90 days? Is it tomorrow? Is it seven days? So you want to assign a time to it. So let's just say 30 days, right? Now, what we do is we chunk this down, right? So in 30 days, you divide that by four, right? What we need to do per week, we chunk that down, right? And then now this gives us, okay, so we can do this in four weeks, we can do that, it's 25. It's like, okay, well, what do I need to do, right? List out the things that I need to do to hit this one. And if I do this times four, I'm gonna get to that. So we chunk this thing down, does that make sense? I know I'm kind of moving fast, but you want to first figure out what the goal is, then we want to assign a time to it, and then we want to chunk this down by dividing it by four, right? If it's in the month or whatever it is for the 30 days, y'all with me on that? And then we want to list out the action items that you need in order to hit that goal. So 100 grand is 92 days left starting October 1st. So you got okay, hang on, let's, let me, let's do it. We're gonna do it together. All right, so what'd you say it was? 1,086 a day if you work every day. All right, well, let's, let's slow down a little bit. So the goal is what? Okay, and you want to do it in when? Starting, starting now, but let's say October 1st to December 31st. So let's say 90 days? 92 days. 92, okay, perfect. 92 days, okay. What does that come out to? $1,087. Per day? Per day. Okay, so we got it per day, which is $1,087. $1,087. Okay, per day. What's we'll multiply that times seven? Okay. That's uh, seventy six hundred dollars a week. Seventy six a week. Okay. And what's that a month? Uh, times four? Thirty isn't that funny? That's just the number I should be hitting. Thirty thousand four hundred and thirty four dollars a month. Okay. So who's who who's done who's done thirty thousand four hundred in a month? <laughs> Raise your hand, please. Not me. Who's done it? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that means that that's possible. This is doable. Who's done 7,600 in a week? Okay, so that's possible, okay? And about the average is about 1,087. So, when we, so if, it's just basically if we get clear on these things, right, then it makes it really easy to achieve these kind of goals, right? And so, again, it's just clarity where you need to start with a goal, right? Start the end in mind and work your way backwards. But I think... And like this is kind of that thing that people miss is they don't assign a time to it that gives you a sense of urgency in order to get things done, which is that equalizer. Because um, and the reason why the time is important is for this strategy right here that I was kind of trying to mention. So the, the, the about the average lifespan is probably like 78 years or something like that for like. But we'll just round it to 80. Right. And so. Um, if we just kind of divide this into quarters, right? Like this, let's just say this is 20 years here. This is like learning, kind of growing up, right? And then this is kind of getting you a little bit of experience. And this is like work, right? And so basically like just through those kind of quarters, like half of life is pretty much gone, right? And so we got like maybe like retirement in here and then we got this little piece right here to make a difference. So when you really kind of look at things from a, from a time perspective, it's like you don't have that much time to get the things done that you need to do. So whatever you have going on, you need to make this time count. Does that make sense? Y'all follow me on that? And so in that sense, then that means that if we're assigning time to something that's going to give us a sense of urgency, but the work that we do has to be meaningful work. 
moving us towards our goal. And so there's two factors in here um, for some of us because we're nice guys. Is one is saying no, right? And so I got two kind of underlying ways to handle no because some people just have a hard time saying no. But it's two things that I always uh, try to do myself is one is um, is I gracefully bow out of it. Like, yeah, Chris, uh, I got some things going on. I'd love to, but I got too many things on my plate. I can't do it right now, but if something changes, I'll let you know, right? So uh, immediately, the first thing I want to do is, is I do not want to agree to something that I cannot commit to to go in 100% on. And not just for seven days or 14 days that I can't pursue all the way throughout. So that's the first thing I'm asking myself is, is how long can I commit to doing it 100% that I'm proud of, not just doing it, not just on your way there, bitching and complaining about it and doing it. It's like committing to it, right? So that's the first thing I'm asking. Um, and then um, the second thing is, is if I can't feel that way, then I want to delay the answer and I want to think about it, right? Well, I want to give myself 24 hours to say, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. It's something I'm interested in. Can I get back to you on it tomorrow? Let me sleep on it, right? So now that puts this buffer in between if you're not confrontational or you know you just feel kind of good about it, which then gives you some chance to process it. Does that make sense? And so, um, and so that's one way to to not overload yourself. Now the the second thing to this is um, the the opposite of distractions is focus. So if we need to do that, then the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what are the things that are distracting us. And so this will be familiar to some of y'all because we went through this, right? And so that's really one I want to kind of talk through because everybody knows their own business, their own personal situations. And so we just want to kind of come up with one thing. What's the one thing that is a big distraction for you that's not getting you towards your goal? Social media. What else? Lack of boundaries with other family members. Lack of boundaries, that's good. Relationships. Can you be a little bit more specific? No. <laughs> like not having them, getting them. Potential significant other and. Like your relationship being a distraction? Yeah. Yeah, love life. Okay, okay. Love life. Gotcha. Doing the nasty. Gotcha. 10 4. I don't know how to phrase this, but working from home in that home environment. Right. I don't, I don't know. That would encompass all of us. I think life. that's the I'm about to talk about it. Okay. Gotcha. I think that working from home for, for me too. But I'm pretty good at just staying closed up and and focused. But there can be definitely distractions. Todd, what's distracting you? Um, circle back around me. Um, go ahead. I'm just gonna say doubt. Doubt is a huge distraction because it just it, that the hesitancy. Um, it, it just wastes time, and then. What I do when I have doubt is, is a lot less effective. It's amazing hearing you say that. You've been doing this for 20 years, right? Yep. Still have doubt. It's so <laughs> great to hear you say worry. that, bro. I, I can't even tell you. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it never goes away. That's for crazy. Me. But it will. It actually it will someday. I don't know if it falls along with, with self-doubt, but sometimes disappointment in yourself. Right. And, and not necessarily in your performance with work, but like, oh, I didn't get up early enough today, or, you know, oh, I should have worked later, or, you know, Maybe you get, you get out of your own way. There you go. I have a dollar for every time I look at Instagram and that's why it's supposed to do JB. Um, I think some of the mechanics of, I was talking about this at, at the lunch table, um, mechanics of policy and then you gotta call the carrier. Like, I'm not up to the point where I have an assistant to do all that. So is it, so, that becomes a distraction. so like admin stuff? Yeah, it's admin. Stuff. But I don't know if that's really a distraction. That's one of the things we have to do. Yeah, it takes you away from accomplishing your goal. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's non -money -making that's activities. a non-money-making activity. That's, that's the <clears> thing. <throat> yep. So, um, 
Yeah. Anybody else want to add anything before I kind of go into some of this stuff here? I, I would add something, and I don't know how to say, it, but like the fluff of everything else we do, like trying to build the team and all these other things. This is huge. I'll write this one. So it's like, dude, like, like it's like, oh, we're trying to grow this team, but then I'm like, dude, I'm trying to help a person that hasn't done crap in six months. Like, why am I giving him all this sort of attention? You know what I mean? Because like, you're a nice person. Yeah, and that's where the whole concept of essentialism comes in, right? So, uh, but we're, we're, a lot of us are investing a lot of our time. I was for a long time and still do at times. Doing things that, one, don't bring me a hell of a lot of joy, and two, definitely don't bring me any money. Um, but can you delay that? This, this one's easy to me because the only thing I would do is I would just turn the mirror to myself and say, who is somebody that I think is super successful, right? And the things that I'm doing, are they doing those things? Or if they saw, if they were to just follow me around for the day, you know, what would they tell me? Like, is this, is this a good productive uh, thing to be doing or am I wasting my time, right? It's really, it and so this is like, okay. Cause I think that this one is kind of falls into a, a lot of space that we're in, where you kind of hear. I switch that bro, because here's the reality. I wouldn't say, who do I, who do I think it's successful? Because that only because this is all based off of everybody else. I everybody. I want to ask the question: Who do I know is successful? Because we all see social media and we see all these people say how much money they make and how all these things. But like, what's really your profitability? So touche. So yeah, you're right on that because that's, that's spot on. But 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 again, you get the point that I'm trying to make, which is, again, the status thing is what you post and the things. But it's it's like we got to keep the main thing the main thing. And I think that this one is a huge distraction because it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't move the needle, right? Uh, it, it makes you look good, but deep down it doesn't make you feel good. It's not getting you closer to your goal, right? In fact, if you weren't doing some of this stuff here, you could probably be doing more things to kind of get towards your goal, right? Um, and again, you can gracefully bow some of those things. Um, does anybody else want to add anything? So I'll just kind of talk through some of these things, how I personally view it. So on my phone specifically, um, I turned all notifications off except for anything that I make as a reminder. So you know how things can just like drop down and pop up and like do all of that? All of them are disabled. And the reason why is because uh, there has been a study is that like you don't realize that these things dictate your behavior. And if you're like, oh, that seems kind of silly. Well, have you ever been having a conversation with somebody and they're talking to you and it just, bzz, bzz, they pick it up and they look at it. And, that, and that's just the bare minimum. What about somebody that's talking to you, right? The phone vibrates, they pick it up, they're in mid conversation and they stop and they do this, right? So that has dictated their behavior. It has prompted them to do something. And that's kind of the way these devices are designed is to be addictive in that way, right? Notifications, it's stimulation. Um, they kind of modeled it from casino gambling thing. Like it's this slot thing. That's why social media is so powerful. The, the, the thing that took social media to the next level was the endless scroll. Once they implemented that, it, it was a game changer. So again, if you're doing deep work and you're trying to focus, is a, no, is a notification keeping you away from, from this goal, right? So I took them off. And the reason why I took them off is because the only things that I wanted to get not be notified were for the things that I intentionally set to get my attention, right? right? Which is put something back in the car at a certain time to make sure I didn't forget it, which is very important for me tonight. Now, uh, and the cool thing is, is you can say remind me later or complete it, and then that's it. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, notifications. So I have nothing that chimes, dings, or vibrates, like doing any of that. But then everything else is muted unless a couple core things. So right off the bat, I got 83 messages and voicemails right here that are just there. All right. But I got two messages and I have that one open just in case my wife, son or somebody does it or you guys hit me up. Right. And then I got Slack for the business and then WhatsApp that if it's like a direct connect because I have uh, my team. There's no email. 
I mean, I got a lot of apps. You don't see anything red on here. You know why? It's because I have to delimit, uh, eliminate these things. Because if this notifies me, right, what happens? It has dictated my actions that I need to go and do it. But if I put my phone down and I'm working on something, unless I think about, hey, I need to check that, that's probably really when I need to check it, right? So I have eliminated that thing from prompting me. So now I am not reactive because what happens is, is everything is a rabbit hole. Checking social media is a rabbit hole. Checking emails is a rabbit hole. Text messages back and forth about something stupid or arguing with somebody that's now got your whole day thrown off and you go take a walk and now guess what? Nothing's getting done. Like all those things are distracting from the goal. And so that is the first thing um, that I removed. Um, and it goes back to focus, right? So there's this thing that um, Tim we call it multitasking. So when you understand like why things are the way they are, so um, multitasking was kind of like a marketing ploy to get businesses, to get busy employees, to get cool at thinking about, um, is there a box or something out there? Yeah, he was saying, is there another package that got brought in there or was it just that? That's just it, okay. yeah. And so um, to get people to do more than one job, right? To be a multitasker. So that's the thing. And there's a saying that you can multitask, but you cannot multifocus. The brain can only focus on one thing at a time. So if that being the case, then um, you just start being aware of these things, right? And, and it's, it's, it's uh, trying to focus on one thing is a very difficult thing once you get aware of it. But if you start being aware of the things that are keeping you from it, that makes it really easy. It's like, okay, what are the things that are keeping me from focusing, right? So notifications is one. Um, so I did this with a practice of my keys, right? So the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And for a long time, uh, this was probably the hardest thing I had to do, was like removing random ass keys that I didn't know went to anything. And here's the cool thing, like here's, here's the key, right? And these are like things for me going to the gym and then I gave my daughter my car and I have this, but I got one key on here, right? What is, the, what's, what, what, is, what is this key to? House key, right? Okay, cool. Now, the reason why that's important is because it's the stories that we tell ourselves. I had this random mailbox key from my apartment from 2004 when I lived off Bradley Parkway, right? But maybe it goes to something I'm going to need in the future that may unlock some gold. I like these things that when I was like going through my keys, I'm like, why am I still have this? And it was the things that I was thinking. And it's like, huh? And I'm like, okay, well, let me get rid And I took one off and I was like, huh, that's interesting. I was like, well, what's this key? Well, I don't need that. I don't know. What is it for? Right? And I had to tell myself, I couldn't throw it away first. I'm going to just put it in this box. And everybody's got the everything drawer <laughs> at the house, right? And then I'm like, well, what's all of this stuff in here? And it's just like the way you do one thing. And it's like, well, you got your hands full and you're going through things. Like I'm fumbling for a key. I got my kid at night. I'm like, yeah, I don't need to be doing that. I need to get out of the car and get in the house. And like, this makes me more efficient, right? I'm looking for these things. So um, that's just one of those kind of practices of being aware of these things where you can kind of test yourself. And, and really the thing I learned from it was just questioning my own beliefs about the thing. It's like, well, if I haven't used it or, or the key's been on it for so long, I don't even remember what it is. What makes me think that, you know, I'm gonna be in a position whenever it's like, I'm gonna find the, like, I'm gonna know that that's the exact key that's gonna hold the thing. And so. Um, that was the reason why I had the keys on there. So um, that's kind of one of those stories where sometimes the stories they would tell ourselves can be distractions also. Um, does anybody resonate with that? For real. Cool, cool, cool. So um, social media. Now this one is very counterintuitive, right? Because I use social media for my own business. So the first thing I had to do was put the notifications to, to remind me, uh, like it looks like a time limit on there. And what you say, a time so, limit? Yeah, so you can put a time limit on there. And here was the most eye-opening thing. The first time, when I first did it, I had it for an hour, and I put it on there, and I scrolled, and it shocked me. Like, it like uh, caught me off guard, because I didn't even realize I was on the damn, on the gram for an hour, and the notification came up. Because you don't really realize it. You just kind of get growth. It's so overstimulating that you click, to some uh, hold press somebody else's thing to go down that and the video pops up and even like Facebook, like the messages jump out at you now, right? It's like, it like does this for you to check that and then to do this and it's, it's like a trap doors. So 
Yes. Like, I mean, you could spend four hours on TikTok. It's worse than video games. It's worse than video games. And they made it addictive to that where you can spend four hours on it and not even know. And the thing about it is it, this isn't a short term thing. This is a long term overall thing where um, in the short term, you make it get on there one time and do it and not do it because we all do. It. And you can get off. But over the long term, one hour chunk, two hours. And you know what else it does? It gets your mind all frazzled and thinking about stuff. I mean, we all get the notifications on Sunday, right? Your screen time has went up 15 percent. And if you look at the breakdown, it shows you what, what apps you're mostly in. So See, and, and you know exactly where I'm going with this. And so that's the one thing right there is the data is already there. We're just choosing not to look at it. So if you want to know like what's on your phone that's distracting you, right? Is it productive or nothing? Just, just look at your bloody screen time, right? It's a good question. You buy an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Every Sunday, it, 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 I am it's not a sheep. You buy an iPhone. <laughs> no, I'm not buying an iPhone. Yeah, but my point is, is that the data is already there. So like none of this stuff is really new for the most part. It's just choosing to, to, to other things that we're able to bring into our awareness. And awareness is kind of one of the first things. And so when you actually quantify and look at it, you're like, well, well, there's four, there's eight hours, there's 12 hours, right, to doing things. And so, you know, I'm not perfect at it at all because I watch a bunch of YouTube, right? But again, I know what it is and I have these notifications on there as a prompt like, hey, okay, that was 15 minutes, that was 30 minutes, that was an hour. And it's like, okay, well, do you need, what, I mean, what product, what's happened productive that you spend in an hour scrolling? Could we all be doing something better than that? Like living our own lives instead of living it through somebody else. And now we're insecure about things or we're frustrated because somebody posted something or annoyed or we're commenting through a rabbit hole. That doesn't serve us at, a, at all, right? Sure. And, yeah. We all probably have people on our Facebook, Instagram, whatever, from previous lives, previous whatever. Go up and clean it up, and that way you won't see so much stuff. Yeah. So it's really helped me to, like, you know. Time. Unfriend people. There's, Unfriend people. There's a that software. I actually just paid for it. Um, a guy I know created it called Friend Finder. And uh, I think it's what it, or friend filter. Are you sure it's not adult friend? No. <laughs> friend filter. It, links, it links into your Facebook, and it, you can sync all your, your contacts and your engagements, and it lets you go back like 180 days. Wow. And so you can see who actually engages and who doesn't. I literally have deleted like 400 people. It'll yeah. let you delete 100 people a day, and you can just click and delete. And friend finder, what's the name? I think it's friend filter. Okay. Um, I'll send you a link for it. Okay. Uh, I honestly, he's a, he's I, I, an ambassador I, I, no, I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I was, it was 249 bucks for me to pay for it for the year. But the guy that created, he actually, you know, posted, posted not too long ago that what it does is he had 5,000 friends and his engagement was like really low. He now has 1600 friends, but his engagement's through the roof because it's actually his engagement with the people that engage with him. Versus just that, seeing all this. That to me as well, somebody maxed out on my friends. Yeah. So. Wait, do you, uh, uh, my, the out. real question here is. Let's see, did you do that for one of your phones or for all of the phones you have? <laughs> well, and I'll tell you why I have two phones. Because one I use for business purposes only and one is for personal. So if something goes off on this phone right now that I'm here, there is no need for me to do anything because I'm not going to address it. But if somebody who I know is calling me on this phone, they know I'm here. So I should probably look at it because it may be something more urgent. Yes. So let's get to this one because this is perfect right here. It goes into the boundaries. Even... Um, even my family, like my wife and my daughter, like they know they got to double down me. They have to, they do, they have to double down me. Yeah. Because if I'm working on something, right, it, that I'm doing something, if you're just calling me about something silly, like they know that they got to hit me twice. And what do I mean by that? So sometimes you have to train people how to treat you, right? Nobody's going to treat you as good as you're going to treat yourself. And sometimes you got you to gotta train people how to treat you. Right. Whether it's people that keep coming to you for information that they could Google themselves, that they could do the research for themselves, that could do these things that you got to chew up their food and feed it to them like a baby bird. You got to call them to wake them up. They got to enter their numbers. Right. All of these things where they call and asking you instead of getting on the phone with Edna or support and doing those things themselves. The same way you had to figure it out is, is those boundaries. Right. And so the first one is the no thing. But then the next one is, 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 is um, uh, the help thing. So if you want the goal or you want the thing 
more than someone else does, they're never going to achieve it. If you want them to have more success than they do, and again, it's all about potential, right? You can see the potential in everybody because everybody has this thing right here, self-doubt. But what happens is the other person can see your potential and they can believe in you if that you have this quality. And if you go through, excuse me, if you uh, if they just follow the steps, they can have success. Right. And so what happens is, is if you don't set a boundary to people that they need to try to figure this out on their own just a little bit to become self-sufficient and resourceful, then um, this is one of those things that's just, just going to bleed, bleed, bleed. It's like a hole in the bucket. Because um, for us, there's an internal reason for that, too, where it's like we want to help people. We're going to do this thing. So there is a little bit of a selfish reason in there, too. And sometimes you don't want to feel like the bad person or, or the bad guy. But again, we only have so much time and we've got to spend it with people that's going to give us some time back or give us some value back. Right. And so you just really have to kind of assess like. Do I do I really need to be helping this person with this? Could they figure this out on his own? Could they have looked at it? Could they have done those things? And just, you know, um, basically higher having a higher standard for your time, making it a little bit more valuable. Right. And so um, we all have people that come to us that need stuff that clearly they could have done themselves. Right. And then people who come to us for help where they just come to us. Right. And here's the, the truth about it is that like a user is a user is a user. Right. So if I need something from you, I'm going to use it until I can't use you anymore. And then once you slam the door in my face, guess what? You know how it is. The other friend, right? Y'all had this in friend circles. Yeah, they called me, too. And now they bitching to you about the same person. And y'all both bitching about this person. And all just like, oh, yeah. So users, user, user. So if you tell them, no, don't feel bad. They're going to find somebody else to use. Right. Am I right? I'm just, just being real here. Right. So, yes. Yeah. And so um, this is one of those things where you could easily get more productive just with this one, just in like just not being available. Right. Or just delaying when you respond to somebody just to see if they figured out, you know, that something comes through email or text or something like that. Just say, all right, I'm going to set a time on my phone for an hour and just get back to them and see if they figured out. Chances are, guess what? They've either went to go ask somebody else and got the answer from it or they figured it out their damn self, right? Everybody's walking around with a thousand dollar computer that fits in their pocket. Ain't no excuse for you not to know anything, get the answer for something, right? Dude, so that, everything you just said, like all I could think about was Eric. Dude, and all I could think this, about is you. This is gold. So like, I'm sitting here- I'm thinking, sitting here literally turning up every day. <laughs> every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm doing too. I'm like going through like, all right, this one, this one, this one. I was like, what? Well, yeah, but you guys are both like, that's me. Like, this is not going to be too. But, 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 but seriously, Eric, like, what one of his intros, right? Um, what was it? One, your intro to oh, yeah. earlier today was, hey, I, I'm the Hurt Locker, right? And yeah. literally he did this with me, actually, of all things, right? Well, with a group of us two, three, four days ago. Right, like shit hit the fan and it's like call Eric. And I'm like, all right, all right, here we go. <laughs> right, but, and yeah, you have to do some of that, but you can only do that. And I, I am speaking to myself too, because I, I know different scale, right? I, I, I enable a lot of the users. And I even just had a guy message me during lunch, uh, Lupe, who has come and gone in this business. He's all this crazy stuff. He's like, oh, I wanna come back and I'm gonna bring people. I'm like, God, I mean, hold up, pause. Anybody looking for people, I got a couple of you now. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving people away. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm enabling them to roll up. So, my point is, too, that the time that you, if you, Eric told me what his goal was coming here, the time that you need to buy back, that's it, that's your sales time. We deal with too many, we deal with, all of us deal with too many 80%ers. Well, the other, the other thing that he's saying, like the that's crazy, the, the delay getting back with people. Dude, that's so great because, like, it, sometimes it is my responsibility to like, get an answer for somebody. But then at the same time, it's like, well, is that my responsibility because 
it actually is, or is it because I'm taking it on? Like, yeah. It's actually their responsibility to get the answer for themselves. Yeah. And if I did delay, it, dude, it's not going to hurt their business to delay for an hour. You're right. And I can set an hour and then, and then literally just go, hey, do you still need this? You know? Um, yeah. So again, this is a thing where he has assumed responsibility to someone's success more than, than they do, right? Like you said, we all control our destinies and the things that we have going on. So if he is taking responsibility of that, it's, it's, due, it's doing two things. One, it's not the best use of his time. And then it's hindering the growth of the other person because if he has to keep doing that, this person isn't going to either to learn or they've trained themselves to keep going to him whenever they have a problem instead of figuring it out for themselves. And so there's two types of people. There are the people that are in this room and then everybody else that is looking for somebody in this room that they can get the information from the answer for to kind of to kind of to kind of lean through. And so if we look at productivity, right, uh, of distractions, can we all agree that the people that are not in this room that um, are wasting your time asking you questions about something are a huge distraction, whether it's in your business, your personal life or your love life or whatever it is, though, that's 100 percent a distraction. And so that's where that boundary comes in, where it's like, um, how much time is this going to cost me is the question that you're going to ask, like like successful people ask two questions. They don't ask how much money they're going to make from it. They ask what? How much is it going to cost me, right? Yeah. Okay. And all, another thing is, is how much time is this going to cost me, right? Because if the value of what you value your time is here and what it's going to cost is different, then it's not an even exchange. It's Shark Tank. Yeah. And so that's the key where you have to really set the standard high for yourself on what, your val what you value your time is and stop letting people waste your time, which then ultimately wastes your money. Right. Fair enough. That's pretty clear. I think I beat that one to death. Now, <laughs> I feel like the, the boundaries to love life and the working from home. Is yes. Like one category of work life. balance. Yes. And I can say that, like, for the love life thing, like um, until I got married, like this was my biggest distraction here was just this thing right here. Just optimizing for you know, right? my optimization. My goal was different. Right. So this was kind of there. So. You kind of, but, but then also I had to mature a little bit too, right? Let's just be real. I just had to mature a little bit in my thinking on things. And that's a practice, right? It's a work in progress. But again, it was just one of those things, right? Y'all get what I'm saying? So that kind of came um, over time. Um, this one here, everybody has uh, some different kind of pieces to this. So I'll just kind of share with you what I do. So um, it's all in your environment. That's the most important thing to this. The hack to this. So um, I need to erase this. Let's see, let's look up. Okay. okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that it visually looks good. The visuals. So I want to make sure that I'm ex like my office. That when I go there, like when I open the door, when I go there, I'm just like smiling. Like it looks good. Like I want to be there. OK, so your environment plays a huge part to that. So if you got something digi in the corner with a light and, and it's like this way, that's the first, the easiest way to do anything. Right. So just think about it. When you walked in here, how'd y'all feel? It's open and it's bright. Did you feel good? It's not cheap. It's not dusty. It smells clean. So you're like, OK, this is some place that you want to be. Right. Cool. Derek come in. He's like, stay over there. He's like, hey, I'll, I'll stay here. Right. So this plays a part in the visuals. Right. The next thing is the sensory part. So I use essential oils, uh, uh, bergamot and sage, like as a essential oil, and I put it in a diffuser. And so this does two things. I don't know if y'all read that uh, book from um, Jordan Belfort, the straight line theory book. Yeah. And so he talks about some pow sauce, a yum yum thing that he used to boom, boom, stick. boom, boom, stick. Exactly. And so the it basically it's about going into a state yeah it's about getting into a state so your sensory thing kind of bypasses some things in, in your brain that associate things so if you smell food right what happens your, your mouth waters and this if you smell something else you know what that is it kind of turns you right it just kind of bypasses things you kind of know it so what you can do is you can use smells to get you to in a state to be highly productive and to focus because when you smell those things it it, it like triggers you to be in a certain kind of state. Okay? I actually do this. 
Yes. So cologne, right? You put it on, get into a state. That's why they have these fragrances. You smell a certain fragrance, you're like, oh, that smells good, right? They so, money, they have a money cologne. Huh. And it literally smells like uh, a dollar bill. Huh. It smells like cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one, <laughs> so one other thing I want to do here with the visuals is I have a big TV in, in, in my office, and all I do it's on travel and vacation channels. The sunny and bright looks cool. Young people having fun and partying. So that's what I'm looking at when I'm working all day. So subconsciously, it's just taking me out of this pain thing of the work that I'm doing and sales and calls and like all of these things. Like I have these other positive reinforcements that are uh, kind of overpowering my senses and things like this. And again, this is kind of like on a deep level, but this is something subtly that you can control to facilitate your environment. Because if there's one thing that I know that your environment plays a huge impact to the success of you, your life and everything. Right from leaving from where I was to coming to Nashville was a huge thing. And so you can control that. And the visuals is, is very important. Making sure it looks good. What you see, what you look at is things that you start to think about and that affects you. And so if you're looking at things that look good, your office looks good. It looks like success. You're, you're looking at whatever goal, someplace you want to go. Um, those things really help subconsciously. Yeah, yeah, it puts me in that state. It just, it just, it, it stands out to me that it uh, gets my attention through everything else. It's kind of like if somebody was cooking fish in here, yeah. right? It's just one of those things that it just like catches my my thing. So you don't turn it on until you're working, type of deal. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, cool. and and also uh, there's a whole bunch of things with the sage and um, bergamot that you could kind of go down the rabbit hole. But those are just like, it's like a, if Zen had a smell for me. So you that, said it was sage. What else? Bergamot and sage and i use those because it's just so calming that it puts me at that state of like if i if there was somebody that was like the cool most the coolest and most calm person it like pulls that pulls me into that state now the reason why this stuff is important is because this is all about getting in the state right you need to like get into a state to be a high performance it's kind of like warming up to go train or do a triathlon you've got to get into a peak performance state and these things are, are gonna um, be essentials for your, for your uh, sensory. So visuals, um, making your office look good, and then like either listening to something or watching something, or like images, right? Like you got successful images of sports or whatever, like putting something <laughs> in there. And then the, the central things, and then I do um, some audio, right? So when I was dialing, I would have the uh, uh, air, AirPod in and I have music bumping to like between calls, right? So I would do a bunch of stuff and then I'd do maybe like 10 to 30 minute blocks and then I would do music. And then especially if I had like somebody just get rude or like do something crazy, something weird happen, that's when I put on my favorite song and I get into it and dance around and then I get back to it. So I turned it into like a, a little bit of a game um, and so I'd listen to, to either music or something that took me to a, another level. So it's one thing, like if I go and work out and I don't have my headphones, right? Or I'll go for a run. It's one thing, right? He's shaking his head. It's like the worst thing. Or if like AirPods, if they just die, right? Yeah. It's like the cuckoo, right? <laughs> yes. You just want to like turn around, right? Like you got the air, the air, the beats, the beats was the worst. I have it on and it just like, Dew. But if you got your song, you, if you run in and you warmed up and your song come on, you a bad mofo, right? <laughs> and so that's the thing that you want to do with the audio. And these things, um, for me, these are just some of the hacks that... Um, Wouldn't that be too I, much distractions if we got like live dials going on, music going on, all kinds of it's stuff? It's whatever gets you in the state, whatever yeah. works for you. Oh. But again, like you can figure out the thing that, that, that does it for you, right? Like if, they, if, it, if that doesn't, doesn't uh, affect you, like before, uh, when I'm like creating something, I'll have like the, the spa music on. Like I'll do that to get me in a really low creative state where I'm intuitively like trying to find my way. And that's one thing that music invokes some kind of emotion in, into it, right? Because you just go and watch a movie, it's just like this. But the music that goes with it is the thing that draws the emotion. And so again, this is one of those things that puts you into an emotional state that really has an effect on you, right? Um, oh, I hope you like some 
uh, random Spanish music. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, my Zoom people know, like, the mood is too low. <laughs> that bunny coming off. Yeah, just think it. about it. Just think about it. <laughs> if, if we was in here, right, and it's just like, whatever, we start throwing on some good stuff, people are like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, we'll it's like, it like pick you up. Like, <laughs> we spent like literally five minutes, but it's an embarrassing. Timmy Bro, that's it. We spent like five minutes looking for that song <laughs> or the picture that comes out. And uh, Jamie took me down that rabbit hole. I'm like, I need to find the song. <laughs> you mean Enter Sandman? You know what's funny? Yeah. Like, um, so I, I was, you know, I had an office and I'm getting ready to shut it down. Then I was working from home and like I was never going into the office, right? <clears throat> and I've got uh, um, not even chairs that comfortable at my kitchen table. They're like wooden chairs, you know, that they're comfortable if you sit in it for an hour, or maybe two hours. You sit in there for like eight to twelve hours, yeah. and you're about to shoot yourself. And and like this went on for like I don't know, probably two months or so. <laughs> and I'm just like miserable, you know. And I would get up and pace because my shit's all achy. Yes. Anymore, you know, so I was, so uh, Colby's like, dude, why don't you just go buy like a new chair? So like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so like, yes. Yeah. So that day, I left my house, went and bought, you know, like a two hundred dollar. <laughs> Uh, Jared Staples, I was like, oh my gosh, so So here's my point though, right? So, how long does it take you to get to the office? Was it seven, eight minutes from? Yes. Okay, but just think about that commute back and forth. Like, that adds up over a year. That turns into a lot of time. Now, imagine this. Was it two, two grand for the office a month? 1200 bucks, right? So, let's just say he just went and splurged and he got a $600 video game chair. Is that a good investment for him? Suck, by the way. But I'm just saying, it's, it's better than the one that you're talking about you were oh, sitting yeah. in, though, right? Um, for him to be... It would be the best investment you can make. Correct, yeah. right? So that is... So let's just say that's 600 bucks. That leaves him with 600. 600 times 12, that's what? Whatever that is, that's how much of profit. He just out of thin air just to doing some things, right? Okay, so... But to put all of these together is like movies make this is really make this really powerful. So it's kind of like that um, X Men movie with uh, Magneto, where it's, he's trying to get the kid to like move the coin or to like crush something, and they bring his mother in. Oh yeah, to get him all in the movie. Yeah. And they go to put the gun to his head, to her head, and it's like do this thing, and he uh, they end up killing the mom, and then he gets mad and he starts smashing all of the people's heads and then it's like the and he's a little kid and he like comes out as like this thing for magneto now you know what the cool thing about that there is no like um nobody's talking you're just watching this scene happen and it's all imagery and it evoked this it's just music really right? yeah, yeah yes and so it's just like all of these things together that has an effect on you where nobody's communicating anything because you're painting this picture in your mind and so this is kind of one of those things where um, when you're in a peak state, right? Like this reminds you of like sensory how to get back into that state. Like I used to do it uh, to a, a, a thing that like every time I made a sale, I would go, woo! Like how um, I think Kobe Bryant hit a game winning shot and he pulls this thing off and he does like that. Like I would do that. And so my wife and daughter knew when I made a sale downstairs because I would make that sound. You know what I mean? But again, this gets me in the state. And so it's like, yeah, well, why you wouldn't do that? Well, you're sitting here on the couch. But let's say if we wanted to go play some pickup basketball, we go to Kung Fu to play some things. You get into a competitive state. Like you get into this state. Well, this is a peak thing where you got to get into a state. You can't do it from this defensive thing. You got to get on the offense, right? So that's kind of what we're trying to do is we're trying to set you up for success. And that's kind of just a little bit of a hack for kind of working from home. Yes. Number two. The conversations and boundaries about things around the house is the conversation that you got to have, which is, yes, I know you like going on vacations and we need to do all these things. And yeah, I do have some things that I need to do. But if there's something, born enough, leave me a little note down here. When I come down, says to check it. I'll try to knock some of those off in the time that I got a break. I'm going to set my break at this time. I'm working, trying to do these things so that we can have this. Where you want to go in the next three months? Okay, cool. I need this time to do that and we'll do it. And to make sure on Saturdays, whatever you need for me to do, I do it between such and such before football come on right so now we're on the same page with that and so our expectations are together and then the last thing is is it important for me to do it right now or can it wait because that was like the biggest thing the trash needs to be taken out trip over something the dishes whatever it is right and so you have to assess 
is it important for me to do that right now or can it wait? Cool. Does that help? As your kids get older, you'll have to teach them how to write you notes and just leave them as a sticky on your desk. And you'll get to it when you have time instead of them interrupting your day to talk to you. And you know what's interesting about that? There's just like, it may seem rigid in a little bit, but it's just a system. Like, like if somebody hadn't... Um, was new coming in and like had to go through the stuff you got to go through. The, like they just brand new off the street and it's like, I want to see what this FFL thing is about. And they just come and go to a conference and go to this thing. They might think y'all are like extreme and crazy, like going through that. Would y'all agree? And so it's one of those things where indoctrination part of the sequence, um, it becomes a normal thing to them. And so sometimes, you know, when you get structured, um, you know, people would just kind of fall in line with it. It's, it's pretty interesting, right? It's kind of like, all right, guys, uh, you know, let's kind of line up. And it's like, all right, let's get back to it. Right. It's sometimes it's like, boom, and it just kind of happens. But I think that the more that you try to practice um, the thing at home, it's going to be helpful because it's hard to do this because this is your home. Right. Um, but it can be done for sure. And I think that these things help if you're excited to go in there. You got uh, you're not sitting on the bar stool who you're trying to work for 10 hours um, like Todd. And it smells good. It looks good. And you have these um, uh, these things right here that will definitely help. Cool. Uh, Self-doubt. So where can I start with this one? This is, uh, again, you got to know where you're trying to go first and foremost. So I might be like a high performance, motivational kind of person with the, that goes down a rabbit hole with these things. But what I can say is, is the reason why I am high performer is because I do some of these things all the time. So there's three things that is just like my Trojan horse's secret weapon is every morning. So we all got a, got a phone here. So every morning I before I even get out of bed, the first thing I do is you see this. You can't see this, but it says AJC vision board. So I click in here and before I even get up to go pee, alarm goes off 536, 7, whatever it is. The first thing I do is grab my phone. I don't check social media, do those things. There's no notifications on there, right? Nothing pop it up. I intentionally grab my phone and I go right here to my vision board. And the first one is my guy, right? The ultimate competitor. Yes, right? Because um, he worked harder. He got the best. He was already talented, but he makes sure he got every ounce out of his talent and more. And, the, and the, the, the coolest thing about him was he was very talented, but he knew that if he added work ethic to it, he couldn't be beat. And the reason why is because he said that if he would practice, he would get up at like four or something crazy. And again, I don't know how the time's right, but just follow me. He would do it from five to seven. He would go back, take a nap or take his kids to school, whatever. And then from nine to 11, he would practice. And then he would take a nap. Then he would practice with the team from like three to five. And then after that, he would do like a, 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 a seven to nine or something like that. So he would get, a talent he was, he would get four practices in, and one day, what if you compound that over a year, over 10 years, over 14 years? So even if somebody younger, hungrier came in that was more talented than him, could jump higher than him, could run faster than him, they couldn't catch him because he had worked so much, it would take them 10 years to catch up. OK, so and I'm not at that level of dedication, but just to admire that, like, like to align my thinking for the day that that's what I need to do. That's where I want to go. So then everything that I want to do. So this one is basically like I want to try to help as many people as possible. But this is basically supposed to be tangible for 100 people. Right. And I go through like making YouTube videos. And so what I'm doing here is, yes, I may be tired. Maybe got four hours of sleep. Maybe got my ass kicked yesterday. Maybe got into it with my wife. Maybe a co a coworker pissed me off. Maybe I got a decline. Maybe I got a charge back. Th what this does is this reminds me every morning of what I what, what goals I have, the things that mean something to me. So it gets me inspired right out of the gate. Soon as I wake up, that's the first thing I look at. It gets me inspired. What do I want to do. So now I'm ex mentally excited for the day, right? So then the next thing um, I do is I have a, a manifesto. So life and death is in the power of the tongue. And a lot of times, if you notice that, like, the biggest, um, 
Um, the, 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 the times that we feel the, the most is when somebody else says something nice about us. Like, man, Tim, you were really crushing this. You were on, you were awesome, this and that. We get these affirmations from other people, right? Which are like few and far between. But what if we just did that to ourselves all the time? To put you in a state. What if we just reminded ourselves, right? So I'm going to pull up this identity thing here. And I, I didn't used to share this stuff before, but uh, I realized that like, we're kind of all going through the same thing. And it's like, my wife used to be like, why do you get up and do that every morning? It's like, cause I needed to get in the state. I needed to wake up. The first thing I want to do is, uh, yeah, I'm tired and I maybe can go back to sleep, but I got all these things that I want to do and try to achieve that now I'm inspired. Like, okay, I got to get up, right? So now I'm, I, I've visually seen it. Now I've got to like speak these things over my, my own life, right? So I went to the bathroom, started the coffee, I got my coffee and I'm like, Arturo is a successful consultant who helps coaches, life insurance agents grow their businesses. All right, if I can make life insurance believe that owning their own lease source is the key to getting exponentially um, successful and the only attainable way is through the AA program, then all other objections and concerns are irrelevant and they have to do business with me. Arturo gets amazing results for his clients. Arturo deals with complexity with ease and leans into chaos. Arturo is a happy person who thinks happy thoughts. He enjoys life and is grateful for his family. Arturo is about to, huge, uh, about to have a huge breakthrough in his business today. Arturo is calm under pressure. Arturo is aggressive with his marketing because he knows that people are controlled by their phones and they don't even realize it. So he will always have a business because people are addicted to social media. Um, Arturo creates products that gives his customers value so that he doesn't have to spend any on ads. You have everything you already need to be successful, so use what you have and do it. I'm not worried about money because I have an unwritten check that is worth millions. Arturo doesn't yell or let things get him upset. He doesn't react or respond immediately. He listens and then thinks. Arturo makes five million a year in revenue in his business and makes four million in net profit. Arturo has a great life, work-life balance. Then he shuts down work every night at 7 p.m. and watches a show or two to let his mind unwind so that he can be ready for the next day. Money comes to me easily. I respect it, I nurture it, I save it, I grow it, and I invest it wisely. And I can go on and on. I tour as a master of business. I speak these things over my life. So I visually set my goal, I've spoken these things over my life, and then I try to find something that motivates me to like get into, that, get into my stance to take a state. Am I ready for the day? Could y'all feel that as I'm reading those things? I'm talking about myself, but one of the, one of the ones that stood out to you. William, which one of those things that I said stood out to you? Uh, you already had everything that you all, you, you had everything you already need to be successful, so, so use it. I'm telling a story about my own self, but you can put yourself in that state. But again, just imagine doing that every single day. Are you going to be ready for war? So I'm arming myself every single day. I'm brainwashing myself to have success. So then once I do that, I'm ready for the day. And then I get to my office and it's set up in the state. Now it's just time to get to work. Now the only thing I need is I need to figure out what the goal. I got this chunk down. Am I going to be successful? Yeah. So that's how you do that. Now, this one is, a, is very important because as entrepreneurs and, and people like this, we do this way too much. And as an adult, these things that kind of go on. Um, f first of all, was that helpful to kind of go through that thing? Because I usually don't share that personal stuff, but I felt like, that, like that's the thing that gives me the edge right there. So if you want to know the high performance thing, is it in the script? Is it in all that stuff? That's what I do every single day to be on. Right? And, and if I'm not in that state, I, I use that to get in that state. All right. So being too hard on myself, for Christ's sakes, give yourself a break. You're working hard. You're busting your hump. It's just like it's this. There's too many things in the day. You just can't do it all. It's impossible. Yeah, you try. You know what you need to do? You need to try to do three big. You need to have a big three. What are those things? And that's why you're frustrated. Right? You're doing a bunch of random things. You need to get up in the morning, get in the peak state, sit down and say, what are the things that I'm going to do? I gave uh, crap. I don't have it with me. But um, I put it in the last one, um, uh, the five minute journal. Yeah. Okay. Talked about that. It says, what are the three things that will make today a success? At the beginning of the day, huh? I've done three of those. Yeah. Great 
Yes. But also at the end of the day, you kind of got to get these things, got to get work off you too. And I think as, 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 especially for guys, like sometimes we don't get to like pull some things off. We just keep stacking and stacking, and adding things on. But you need to have your big three. If you get those three things done, then you have one. And guess what? You live to fight another day. Who was this talking, just talking about the another day thing with Ed? Was it Ed Milet? Andrew, what was the name of that book? Uh, one, yeah, like one, yeah, so we got one more day. Guess what? I'm chipped away at this. I was ready. I gave it all I had. I laid it on the line. Did you get finished with the big three? Okay, what's next? I laid it on the line. We'll get after it tomorrow. So don't be... Yes, yes. So big three attainable things that you need to do. So again, um, I'll, I'll come back to the big three. So, you know, being too hard on yourself, right? You can't get it all done. Nobody can. There's not enough time in the day to do everything. But what you can do is figure out the things that are the most important and do those things. And then guess what? If you work hard at those things and you put that on the list, then that's something that you can be proud of, right? And the other thing to that is do it till you're proud of it. Right. Um, uh, there was a uh, I think I told the story the last time. Right. And uh, there's uh, listen to my mentor. And he said that um, when he was a kid, uh, I think it was like Saturdays, his dad would have him to wash the car. And so this one particular Saturday, we just stood out to him the most where his dad is um, in the garage doing something. And he's like, hey, son, it's, it's you know, 9, 10 a.m. Let's go wash the car. And he goes and washes the car and he comes back. It's like, dad, I'm done. And he's like, you want to come check it out? He's like, no, I'm good. He goes, why do you want to check it out? And the first thing he says is, are you proud of it? He's like, what do you mean? He's like, you washed the car. Are you proud of it? And he said, if not, then go back out there and wash it until you're proud of it. And then guess what? You're done. And so a lot of times we're too hard on ourselves is because we're doing work, but we're not proud of it. And we know that we're capable of so much more. So we're beating ourselves up, trying to like get you to do more. But the thing is, is we just haven't confronted that thing that we're not working hard enough. We're not going the extra mile and we're, we're, we're punching ourselves. But the thing is, is like we're not doing it to be proud of it, because if you're proud of it, then this this is automatically removed. Does that make sense? It seems kind of like kind of intuitive, but does that resonate with y'all? So so that's one of those things. And then it's about doing the right thing. Right. So. We've all been in a position, especially in this business, where um, maybe you could flip a policy or you could do a certain thing, right, that's going to financially benefit you, but not necessarily help that client as much, right? I mean, we've all been there, right? Um, and uh, like I, we, I was talking to somebody this week and, you know, there was some stuff going on and we're like, man, I don't know how you could put your head on a pillow at night by some of the stuff people do. Dude, at the end of the night, you just gotta ask yourself, hey, did I do everything I could do today to be my best self, like as a parent, as a, right? And if not, damn, what can I do better tomorrow, right? Um, and I try to ask myself those two questions regularly, especially as a dad, because I don't know what the hell's going on <laughs> half the time. Um, but it's like, dude, I, okay, I didn't get any sales today. I didn't make money, but I made relationships, right? Like, that has value too. It doesn't pay your bills, <laughs> but you never know what a relationship today. is gonna do for you in the future. <laughs> That's the key today. So that, that, that's, that's a big, that's a really good point. Like I'm hard on myself about certain things, but I, I think I'm also proud of the work I do and how like, yeah, sure. I probably enable too many people to help people. That also may, brings me happiness though. Right. So I just can't let it hinder me. That's the key. It's a line. line between hindering me, bringing me happiness. But dude, I think if we just always do the right thing or try to at least, you know what, what you shared er earlier, right? I mean, I know Chris for a long time. Like I know he's gonna do the right thing, but like the anything he tells you from now on, right? You know he's he's coming from the right place, and he did it because he cared about somebody. Right. Cool. I think. Go ahead. No, you first. Well, I mean, I don't know. If, so, like, because we do, if we don't work with agents now, we do might in the future. And it, when I was younger, like I used to maybe give money. To, people on the street I'd seen, you know, because I was, I felt bad or whatever. And then I'd get irritated if they went to the liquor store. And I think that that's kind of the same thing with helping agents. If you're going to help them, if, I, if I'm going to help them, what they do with their information is, is, is on them. If I let myself get upset about it, then I wasn't really helping them for, for the right reason anyway. I was more helping them 
hoping that they would do what I wanted them to do, right? So we do have to limit our time with that. I just, I don't know, I just was thinking about that when, whenever you were saying that. Like, we could help somebody, them not use it, and not be mad at it, right? Because then, then it's two losses. Hmm. I mean, you just help them and then move on. And, yeah. It kind of reminds me. And you could choose not to help them again, but. My mom um, used to say a saying in Spanish for those of you who speak Spanish: "Haz el bien y no te fijes a quién." Yeah. So do what's right, but don't pay attention to who you're doing the right to. It's oh. just right. So you're just doing the right thing, and the rest will take care of itself because you did the right thing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Eric, Eric what you got? No, I was going to ask. Um, it's your morning routine. I think I just missed the last part of it. Maybe uh, you look at your vision board first, and then you read your manifesto to yourself. And then what, what's the? Um, I uh, listen to something that is uh, motivational, or something that details like uh, um, that's going to help me with the task that I have at the, at, at the beginning of the day. So, for example, for this event. To get ready for this event, guess what I did? I listened to a mastermind, right? To be in the state. When I went on a walk, guess what I did? I went on a walk, got some sun, but I listened to uh, a mastermind to like be in that state. So the thing that you're kind of working on, you want to kind of like transition it. And the thing about, uh, you know, technology now, we can leverage other states from other people to kind of to kind of trigger us to get into that thing. So when I was uh, trying to get things off the ground, like I live, breathe, personal development of Jim Rohn, Eric Thomas, um, Les Brown, like I did all those things to just get me going, to kind of get it going. Because here's the thing, the human beings are amazing that uh, we only need a little bit of confidence to just, to just, you know, to just take it to the moon. You know what I mean? But like just getting that little flicker, that pilot light going on, just to kind of like, you know, get it to go on. Sometimes it takes a little while. Hell, it took me 35 years to get on fire like this, right? But now I'm, I'm like, I mean, trains left the station. So again, that's for everybody else. But this, these are the things that you could control every day to kind of get into that state. So if you have this going, you um, have done the big three, which is, um, uh, I mean, the, the mindset in the morning to remove the self-doubt. Um, there's one more thing with the self-doubt I'll say too, but I'm, I'm going to say is reviewing past wins, right? You, you, got, you got to do that too. Um, with some of the stuff, I would go through some sales slumps where I didn't close anything. And just calling a past client, doing that. Just calling up somebody that you enjoy and just talking to them. Or uh, somebody that, um, scenario where your mom, where you just call somebody that it really meant a lot to them, to call them to do that. Right? Ever had to deliver a death claim, something like that? That'll, that'll re give you some reconviction. And if you don't have that, just call in the past clients. You've got a good relationship or somebody that had a situation that impacted their lives, man. Those, those things will get rid of that. Um, so, again, the, what, what I do in the mornings is I, I just made an album on my phone, things that I wanted, and I just clicked on them and added it. And it's just vision board. So I look at that first thing. And then um, I'll share with y'all what I have and y'all can make it y'all own. Because I didn't come up with that. It's just something that I adopted. So y'all can adopt mine. And again, you just make it say what you want to want. Because what happens is if you speak the, like, if I do that and then say those things over my, I'm giving myself confidence. That's all I need to just, I, I, I'm out of bed already. I ain't got nothing else to do. I got a goal that I want to do that I can't, that's the burning desire. Now it's like, you're successful. You're strong. You're smart. You can do anything. You got everything you already need to be successful. Just go. Like, that's all you need. It's like, all right, cool. Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? No, man, dude, listen, now I'm transferring that to somebody else. And that's what it sells. Transferring certainty. <laughs> that's it. You get in the state, man. Your chest starts lifting up. Your, your head man, then guess what? You start attracting other people. Like, I mean, the last few weeks, I know we're kind of talking about some things, but the last couple of months, everybody's talking about you. It's like, you, it's like something has changed with you. Like, you've get, you got in the state. And everybody can see it. Could you see it? Yeah. Talk about it. I've had multiple conversations. And like, so that, that's kind of how you do that. But, um, you, you know, you, you got to make it a practice. What it is, it's a practice. It's something that, um, you know, you're not going to master. Some days you may do it, some days not. But like the, over time, it will compound. And so that, that's what I use. Being too hard on yourself, like I said, we kind of wrap that. The admin thing. Um, oh, last thing about the being too hard on yourself is like going hard. 
when's the last time you just went all in and just went hard? Just like you got, you know, the, the water heater just broke and you need to get it, get it done, right? And you've just been proud of that effort. When's the last time you did that? Where you just fucking went hard. You know, where you just like, can't nobody touch me. Well, I'm just unstoppable. Like, it doesn't matter what anybody does. I've just went in. And you just beat your chest. And you know, that ego is just like, I did that. Mm -hmm. Right? And in that state. Because that's when you're most proud of yourself. And it's like, well, what did I do then? When's the last time you do that and, and do that? Like, that's what you optimize for, getting back to that. Because we've all been there. So that means that we've done it, and it's just like, okay, how do I get back to that? Does it charge you up? Um, and then admin things. So there's that 100 units of time thing that's in the group. And even if you don't, so the first thing I would do is I would just audit like one day. Well, you set a timer on your phone for one hour, and then you just track what you did that hour. And you do that for an entire day. You don't change anything, you just do that. And then in that grid, there are certain tasks that are associated by like zero, 10, 100, and then like 1,000. And it's called 100 units of time, okay? So what you did here, there's gonna be some trends of things that you're doing, and then here's gonna assign a value to those things that you're doing on a daily basis. Very systematic, and it's black and white, because whatever you did, you wrote it down, and then like this is the thing, so like this is the thing. It's blue, so you can argue as much as you want, guess what, it's still blue, right? So this is the thing. And, and again, it's not even about how much it costs, it's just like having an awareness to this. So when we look at this, where, if, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do it again. I got you. So if, if we were to assign an admin task, Todd, would it be zero? Would it be $10, $100, or $1,000 per hour work? Just based off of these four options that you got here. Are you talking about like what it would cost me? or what, like If we assign a value of someone's time per hour, we allocate that. Would it be $10 per hour work to do admin things like answer email? or to check on a policy thing, would it be worth $100 per hour or $1,000 per hour? Okay. Do I need to say anything else about that? If you're uh, doing a sales call to close a, a customer, what, so where would you put that? Would you put that in $100 per hour or $1,000? <laughs> Look, he taking it. Yes. Uh, the point here is, right? I don't mow my own yard, not only because I definitely don't want to, but because it's going to take me 45 minutes to an hour. When in an hour, I could probably make how much more money? Yeah. Same thing for you, right? Yes, calling a carrier, whatever carrier it may be, might take you an hour, right? And you're like, hey, I'm a one man show. I have to do it, and you have to do it during the working day. Well, you can get an admin, right? Or talk to Mike or somebody, but hey, can I, you know, whatever you need to do, Filipino admin, whatever, virtual admin, anything like that, it might cost you six, seven, eight, ten bucks an hour, and maybe you use it for 10 hours a week or something, right? Because you don't have a ton. That 60, 100 bucks a week is actually probably gonna make you way more money than you calling that team yourself. And here's the piggy piggyback on this. Who loves admin work? Raise your hand. Yeah, Hold on, so raise your hand. So you can hire somebody who fucking loves to do it, is gonna do it way better than you and have it organized and all of that, that loves to do it. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you love to do something, you're gonna do it. My VA, she works all the time. Like she messages me, oh, dude, she loves it. Somebody loves something, they're gonna do above and beyond it. If you hate it, you're gonna do the bare minimum. You're costing yourself, you, I mean, you, you're wasting time even doing it because you hate it. You shouldn't even be doing it. And you're doing it badly. Yes, and you're doing it horribly, so you're going to have to go back. You're not going to remember. It's not filed. It's over here. You close it out. You deleted it on accident. Now you're chasing your tail. It's, it's, it's crazy. There's literally times where I'm like, yeah. I'm going to spend an hour waiting for Transamerica. Oh, 
fuck it. I'll just let the bottles lapse, but I'll just sell another one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so many things that I... See, see that, that, that's the I know funny, that sounds weird, but I... That, that's it. the funny thing about this, right? Because I heard um, uh, J, JB, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I heard JB, and I think I even heard somebody else say it. Like, I'm not there yet to get an admin, right? Um, but, uh, like, so I, I knew straight out the gates because I was already hitting, you know, big numbers straight out the gates, so I knew I needed an admin. But yeah, exactly like what Arturo was saying. I mean, like, if you want to get to those levels, you know, issuing 20, 30, 40 plus a month, yeah, pay, whatever, whatever. You, you can get a Filipino ad admin for $6 an hour. I mean, literally, that's, that's over. you know? Yeah, yeah, so I mean, like, like yeah, well, why, and do it for 10 hours or something like that. Love it, love doing it too. It's one of those things that like, when you assign values to things, like, it's kind of like if something's on sale, and you saw it on sale, but they didn't have your size, and it was 29 bucks, it was, a, it was 11. And then you're like, all right, and you come back the next time, and it's, it's, it's 59 bucks, not on sale, and they have your size. It's really hard to freaking buy that, right? Once you see this, you can't unsee it. You really can't. It's like your eyes up, it's like, I, I want it, but I just can't, because you just like, you feel like you missed out on something. So again, it is, uh, you know, you just raise the kind of the, the standard in the way you kind of see things and you just value your time um, a little bit more. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, and then I think for the last one that I would say is for the status thing is like Platinum, baby. status really doesn't mean a, a lot. It, it really doesn't. It, it, it does. It, it, it um, the, like in the grand scheme of thing, it's like how you keep score, but it's like what's more important, right? It's like trying to get the status or like getting the thing done. And so what I mean by that is, is if you're optimizing for status, then your emotions are gonna go like this. You get likes, sometimes you don't get likes, you get this, you get this, it's gonna go up and down. But if you just love doing the thing and you focus on doing that, you're just gonna do like that. And so you just gotta make sure that whatever you're doing, you got the right intentions for, right? So if you're doing something, do it and, you know, saying do it for the sake of doing it and that. And as a byproduct of doing it, these things will kind of happen. But if you're optimizing for those things, because it's it's a, a rabbit hole. Right. So Michael Jordan said in the, in, the, in the last dance that some of the worst years he had was when he was doing all these commercials and these promotions. And when he went back and looked, it was like, oh, that was the difference. Right. Uh, there's something in the NBA, it's, it's called the Kardashian effect. Like some of these, James Harden and some of these guys, when they dated Kim, tr they had the, the worst years of their careers. Flat out. He's nodding his head because you know I'm true, right? It's like it happens. It's a st yeah, it, it has been bad. So again, making sure that you're doing things for the process, right? You get back to doing it because you love to doing or figuring out what it is that you love to do and doing that. And there's two things that you all that um, I kind of align with with like being successful. The reason why I'll always be successful with this is because I love doing this. Now, I don't know anybody who loves to do this more than I do. And it gets me excited. Like I could talk about this for four more hours. I could go down so many rabbit holes and we do it with a lot of things. But like, why don't we just do that? Right. Give the other stuff that we hate to somebody else. Right. That could change their life, too. And they'd be good. And do that. So it is it, one of those things. So it's a win win. Right. And again, this is that kind of fame thing where it's just like um, it's good in the beginning, in the short term. But over the long term, you start to drink your own Kool-Aid kind of and the things kind of can roll where you have t you have now taken your eye off of the road and you're looking like, yeah, you see me. I'm driving this. And then. Remember the right. Titan? Yeah. Boom. No. Hey, remember the Titan? When the guy at the end of the movie, like, he's like, hey, what's going on, boom, crashes. Yes. Yeah, so stay in your lane again. Like, these things are good. But again, if you're, if, but again, if your um, standard is so high that you're just like, dude, that's just the beginning, right? I'm like, that's not, I mean, you're probably like, yeah, it's cool. I'm humble. I appreciate it. But I'm trying to do something bigger, right? And so if this is getting there, then I would challenge you that your goal isn't high enough. Your, your goal isn't big enough. Right. If what you've done at this point, somebody pat you in the back and you, you feel proud about that, then I would challenge you that you need to get a bigger goal to get outside your comfort zone. Cool. So, again, 
we chunk down everything to, to actions and then we put time on it to give us a sense of urgency, right? And if you're like, I don't have any time, guess what you do to figure out how much time you need to get? 100 years of time, right? So you can strategically and objectively figure out like, okay, should I be doing this or that based off of this? And then you assign a time to it, like I wanna achieve X in a certain amount of time and do this goal. Then, I mean, that's just a scientific kind of process to go at these things. And then eliminating all of this. So if you have this clear and you eliminate this to achieve this and you have an attainable goal that you're excited to do every single day and you love doing it, are you unstoppable? Is there anything standing in your way? That's how you could achieve high performance. So when I first started, okay, um, I, I had goals, right? So I set goals. My goal was to protect the family a day, right? Did it happen every day? No. But that was at least one family, right? Um, in the beginning, um, you know, especially when you're kind of getting going and the thing is going, if you haven't hit your goal, so like, right, um, we're in kind of the same path, right? 100 kids. So let's say it's, you know, it really is $1,500 a day, right? Because it's five days a week. Now, exactly. Or whatever, right? So you break the numbers down. But, but I work every day. There you go. So my point to that is, by time back, what I mean is, if I'm working in the central time zone, right, that yes. means that I can, I can hit up Eastern time people a little earlier. Well, if I didn't hit my goal that day or my daughter took me away or whatever happened that day, if you don't hit it, right, now you can go hit up California. Well, if California is not working, get your Alaska license. Find some Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, Alaska Hawaii. Sucks. Don't go. <laughs> 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 but, but, well, an uh, Alaska license is really cheap. I love, I love Alaska. Dude, so my point is, you gotta, like, if you can't do it from your 9 to 5, 9 to 6, right, that doesn't mean the world stops. It's a different time in the world right now in many different places. We can still get business done. So if you don't hit your goals during your 9 to 5, hey, you might have to sacrifice, you know, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, right? I mean, that's really important. So that's what I did in the beginning. Information alone isn't going to get you anywhere. It's supplied information with no distractions toward an attainable goal is going to get you to having the key to success. So what we're going to do now, and like this is the beauty of writing things down, because when you write it, you create it, which is a committed thing that is now, you know, brought into reality. And it's out of these things, we talked about a lot of things. The thing that stood out to you, what's the one thing that you're going to implement? What was it? Yeah, Notifications? Uh, customize um, uh, focus for in the morning and then I customize focus for my work hours. Okay. So. What's your one thing? Being too hard on myself. Self doubt to me, that's one whole thing because I expect a lot of myself. I know I have a work ethic. I'm not seeing the results that I know I can do. And I beat the shit out of myself. Yeah, it's a never ending vicious cycle of, of paralysis, right? Because crazy is on the flip side, of it, I feel like I'm great. But then there's that other voice that says you suck. Well, because then what happens is, is, is that you're not in the uh, creative state to do these things where that's what you need this like place to be in. So because if you like, man, with sales, though, if you really just kind of treat it as like a game, like like gamify the thing. Like you can get recreative with stuff. And like when you have this negative self-doubt of these things in here, like nothing, like just think about being pissed and trying to do something. Is it ever good, right? If you hated it doing it or you're mad or you're frustrated, nothing good comes from that. And so like this kind of perpetuates that kind of thing right there. It, dude, uh, okay, so there's a lot of self-doubt and a lot of people, myself included. But I think something that goes hand in hand with that is creating a sense of urgency, right? Some people have money. Where like, if money, if you don't have money to pay your bills, right? I promise you, you won't have a ton of time to feel bad about yourself because you're like, shit, my electric goes through tomorrow. Oh yeah. So you create a new sense of urgency where it's like, gotta make another call, gotta make another call. If you have a financial means, you're like, F it, I can go to dinner. Yes. Right? And I, I mean, everybody's situation everybody's is different, but so yeah, you got some time to feel bad for yourself, right? But dude, if shit's about to hit the fan, you got to get some stuff done. Yeah. Right? Like if your kid gets hurt, okay? Your kid falls down, you have to take it to urgent care, right? I've never had to do that, Jesus, when it happens, I have a heart attack, right? Like, and maybe it was your fault that your kid fell, right? 
Like it's your fault, you're like, ah, oh, shit, I left that out there. In the moment, you're not gonna be like, oh, man, I just look bad, I just have to pour it out. No, you're gonna take action, you can damn get to the dollar, right? And you can feel good. And then afterwards, you can process the situation. Right? But like, that's my point here. Like, we just don't have that sense of urgency sometimes. Yeah. You and may have the work ethic, but you're not working to your work ethic potential because right. you don't have sense of urgency. You're well, right. and so here's I'm speaking to myself when I say this. And here's another there's levels to this whole like self-doubt and like worthy at the thing cuz there's a difference from the 0 to 10k or whatever it is to when you're making 20, 30 and like you got appointments coming in and leads and you ain't, you ain't really hurting if you don't show up for a little bit. It's a different level where this is why this stuff comes into because the lights ain't going to get shut off if you don't do it. So you really got to stay sharp. It's different. Cuz it cuz it's just Yes, because the desperation is not there. Like a lot of the time you start in your business, that shit's out of desperation, dude. You got to make it happen. Somebody needs you to provide for. But then once you do that, you're like, Shh, you dude, cut the coast like my, a little bit. My one thing is my office. I hate my office. It's a converter room. Yeah. I still have a mattress up against the wall. Dude, that's that's space price. Price. I know, right? But I'm like, I don't, I don't, like, I, dude, I, I actually like it. I got my little setup, but I'm like, dude, I don't even like it in there. Like, I'm like dude, I don't mind working. It's cool work, but like, I'm like, I want some uh, But I don't want to invest any more income. So I'm, right? I'm like, dude, I, I, don't, I like you like working from home. It's great. But I'm like, dude, I could put, I, I literally have a TV on the ground. I'll bring you my Right? So the way that you kind of handle some of the sense of urgency is, is because sometimes when you got cash coming in, you're making money. It, it, you know, there's a false sense of it with that status right there where money's coming in, but the money comes in if you don't have it strategically set out a certain way. Yes, you, you, it's like the money that you made isn't really what you made, right? And I talked about this at the last event with like structuring your bank accounts, right? So just real quick, it was just like, you have your bank uh, thing set up and then you have a, a business checking and savings and then you have a personal checking and savings, right? Stuff goes into business, and then the business savings you need to put 10 to 15 percent aside for taxes. Then you need to kind of like pay yourself first a little bit, um, and then and then save a little bit for a nest egg. So if you had 12k and you did that, right? Let's say you made 20,000, right? And then you got the business. This is your business checking. Right. So if it's just all in there and you just got one account or it's your personal. Right. You, you think you got all this money. Right. That's the thing. But if you were to just do the, the business savings where you just put, let's just say, 10 percent in there. Well, now that's two thousand here. Right. So now you got 18. Right. And then you need to pay some some. Uh, Yes. All right. So you need to pay yourself, right? So let's just say. No, we gotta pay you. That's what she said. <laughs> yes. So, so let's put that in there. So now, what is that? Eighteen. So you got thirteen now. I don't even look at the twenty as twenty. The twenty is sixteen because the right. percent's gonna fall off. Okay. So it's got thirteen here. So up here with all of this in there, you think you're making all this money? You got money. You good, baby? Well, what about um, um, saving a little bit, putting some off? So right, let's say ten percent. I ain't even got there yet. Bro, you got life. Yeah. So you got that, and then uh, let's say you got, let's say life tax, right? Half of that's just going to life. You ain't got no money, man, right? But if you have it all in one account, it kind of feels like this. So if you don't have your account set up properly to where, so you can use these bank accounts psychologically to keep you hungry. Dude, there ain't nothing in my bank accounts. Nothing in there. It's all moved somewhere else. So I got that edge. I wake up every morning, and I'm just like, I got to get it. It's, it's, it's there. So psychologically, I'm like, well, something hit this. It might go nay, right? Like, dang. Or, if, you know, it's like, dude, it's crazy. Um, and that's kind of where I want to go next is like the next level with this is talking about like wealth strategies. So if y'all look in your path, I think pamphlet, um, it's like the second or third page. It says wealth strategy. And so this is kind of where I want to talk to y'all. Y'all can look at these businesses as like money printers and when you look at your business a little bit different and we kind of reposition our business as like a money printer with a a, a longer term goal then you're good oh what's that nice so if you look at your business 
as like a cash machine. And the thing is, is you need to have something else that you can put this money into that increases it, okay? So when you do that, now it's not just like making money. It's like, how do I make my money work for you? Because that's the true uh, financial freedom is when your money is making money for you, where you're making money independent of your time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're going to go with these strategies here. So I'm going to use a blue one for this. So kind of in, the, in, these, in these wealth strategies, the first one that you want to do is, is you got to get your business profitable in the first place. You got to have something left over in the first place. Okay. So this first one is profit. So how do we get our business um, personal, uh, profitable in the first place? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to track everything. So if you got things coming out of different places and you're co-mingling funds, the first thing you need to do is you need to get a business account. That's first and foremost, because you need to have things coming in and going out so you can look line by line at the end of the month, press the PDF thing and have it coming out. Right. And so when you do that, then it's like you can go through things line by line or with your accountant. And it's like, OK, do I need that? So in order for you to play this game over here to have to be independently wealthy, you need to have some things left over so that you can reinvest those things. And when you treat your business like a cash flow, a cash machine to fund your financial freedom, now this has a purpose, all of these things. So now you're not just working to make money, you're working to get time back in the future. Does that make sense? It's like you've turned it into this thing. So let's just say this is it's like a palm tree, supposedly, and then this is like water all around it. Well, that's the freedoms, right? That's explosion. Yes. So, so, <laughs> so you see what I'm saying though here? So we got profit. So, and the reason why that's important is because this is cash flow. And the reason why most businesses fail is lack of this, right? And the reason why most businesses fail is because they don't, they have lack of it and they don't have lack of understanding about that cash flow, which means that if you don't track it, right, that's the first place that you're failing which is just looking at it. And not that it's just coming in and out, like where are things going? Is it going up? Is it going down? Not that you just got 20 grand and you're excited about that. Like, okay, what's expenses in here? Cause there's only three ways to increase your profit, right? It is to raise the prices. It is to decrease your expenses or to find something that you can sell to the same customer um, a, 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 a different product to repeat. Okay. Those are the only three ways to do the profit. Right. And so for y'all, you're kind of limited by the increase specifically on the policy, but you can sell a higher premium on the policy, but you can't really influence that part there, but you can do it with the expenses to get some cash flow. For example, you just made him, how much, how much money did you make him? Well, the office thing, $24,000 in a year, something like that. Right. Just out of thin air. If just by doing that, there's money in here. Plenty of profit in here to go into other places. So Arturo, real quick. So with that, okay, I, I know a lot of questions and a lot of people want to talk about automation. So for the last week, really bad, I've been trying to say, hey, how can I make money? Well, I'm going to talk a lot more about it tomorrow. But how, and you guys, the question is how do you do it? How can I make money while I'm not working? <laughs> okay, like that sounds super lazy. But, and we all have one tool readily available right now and it's called Ethos. Okay, I don't know how many CRM leads we have from God knows what year. I would download all those things, and that's another, like, how do you make money? Another way is by, like, not, like, you can make money right now by some, are you familiar? Pulling money out of thin air. Are you familiar with Ethos? Yeah. It's insane, bro. Like, we could literally be sitting here, two applications could be submitted. Right? And I'm doing it wrong. So, but, but I'm saying, like, that. Profit can come a lot of different ways. Yeah. What happens is, and the, the thing I'll tell you guys about automations really quick, is don't, it can become a massive distraction to piggyback off of what well, Also, on top of that, there is no way to uh, completely automate everything because it's one of the, it's a zero sum game, like it's never ending. Yep. You automate this thing to automate that, to automate, and they connect and it changes. It just never, 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 never ends. It's like that, the goal of perfection is just like, it just isn't going to happen. 
but like profit here and it's like to increase profit sometimes it's already there i mean it's you know doing that's like two thousand yeah. bucks a month that's yeah. that's 24 24. Uh, i was like considering like letting my office go and, and me and jerry were talking yesterday he's like oh yeah you need to let it go and i was like that's all i needed was <laughs> yeah confirmation right there but that's two two grand a month that's twenty four thousand dollars Right? Could y'all use the extra twenty-four thousand bucks just out of thin air? Nah. Nothing, nothing else done in doing that. And so that's how you can do that. And then that's that cash flow thing that you can do to get to that financial, um, um, you know, freedom. The and then, two, it, I just, one quick, I don't want to interrupt your flow. Yeah, go ahead. Twenty-four thousand dollars of cut expenses mm -hmm. is like let, let's say you're on a hundred percent commission, mm -hmm. right? It's not twenty-four thousand of premium. It's more like way more fifty thousand of submitted premium because you have to calculate it in. It cost you money to market to find that premium. And then you had submission to issue. Then you had cancellations, right? So when you cut your costs, like it's like a multiple on your business yeah. profit. That's um, dope. And, and I, I had a guy. Uh, go, I, I did. I was new to this concept until like maybe just uh, four years ago, and I had this buddy of mine take me through, it. and I was like. This is unbelievable. Like just by cutting out a thousand dollars a month, that's like adding, like it, it, at the time it was like a hundred thousand dollars worth of premium. Hmm. So when you look at it like that, you're like, I'm an idiot. I gotta cut some of this stuff out. It's like I'm trying to do this to make all this money. It's like, dude, use my brain. Like, how much does it cost you to print something out, look at it, do like this? And like, there's money right there. Not picking up the phone and calling nobody. Not driving somewhere. It's just like doing that. Cool. So. Go ahead. Eric, that, that's so true. So I, I Yeah, just think about that. 50%, like what? 50,000? Like, dang. Well, the, the kicker too is, right? Like, do you want to, I've, I've been asking myself this all the time. We all look at people, maybe it's status, right? That a lot of people are starting to hit Hall of Fame and all these things, right? I'm like, do you want to be the guy that maybe, um, I don't know, issues 600,000, but nets and profits 100, 150, because their overhead is off the freaking charts? Right. Or you're going to be the guy that maybe issues 300, but it's netting, you know, 200. This is the only number that matters. This is it. That is it. You want to measure something? There's like a, 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 a dude, this young kid came out with a, a rap song and he said, he don't want to hear how rap, uh, rich you are if you can't tell them how many mortgages you have or something like that. And so if you want to see like what somebody's doing, it's like, okay, how much? profit are you making and like what are you doing with that because that's the most important thing so the, the thing is just clearing up the cash flow right and then the next thing is cash reserves now nobody ever ever talks about this and the reason why i'm kind of bringing this up is because i wish when i first started that somebody would have told me about this because this is the thing that changes the game where you're like making money but there's levels to making money that when you start doing this this kind of makes the game but it's hard like running and putting on the weight vest this makes it so then, again, psychologically, you push past the goal of just making money to do something with it, and then you put a constraint on it, right? And so this is kind of what I do is like, I wanna make sure that I have at least one month salary saved up, just war chest, just, just in case anything happens. So for me, and I, and I wish it was more, but I just got 50K just sitting there. Just there, just in case anything happened. COVID, this and that. And it's not even about the money. And I'm not trying to brag or impress you, but I'm just trying to press on you like, this is what happens. And the reason why this is important is because there's a story that um, uh, I think Apple was struggling and Warren Buffett and Bill Gates were friends. And he, they, they would have lunch all the time because I think one of those guys' dads introduced him to the other one. And he was like, man, we just keep having these issues. And he asked Warren Buffett to take a look at the finances. And he was like, well, it has nothing to do with, with all of these things here. It's this line over here. And he was like, you have no cash reserves. And so what happens is when you have uh, cash reserves, like, yeah, you could be investing some of this and anything, but that's not the purpose. It's to give you confidence. It, you have bigger balls when you have that part of my French. But it gives you this thing where you, you kind of like build this force field, like if something were to happen, it, it doesn't matter. And so that's kind of what that, that number is. So this number could be 10, it could be 20, whatever that number is for you, right? You want to be contributing to that. So again, you're like making these levels, excuse me, you're making these levels here for that. And then the last 
thing for just this purpose is that's where the assets come in, right? So I'm saying you're turning this into a cash machine to play this different game here. And that's kind of where the stocks go, right? The crypto, real estate. All oh, life insurance. And then the second business, right? Exactly. And I'm about to get into that. I'm glad you mentioned that. And then the sec it's like the second business, right? Like how you fund uh, other things that make you more money. Now you're leveraging other people's time. And that second business could be a team, right? Just think about that. We we're just talking about other ways where you got money coming in as a flow. And so that's kind of this um, level to play the wealth strategy here. And this is kind of what I implement here. Because when you start looking at your business in this fashion, just like the 50,000 just sitting in there, like, wait a minute, I got 50,000 of premium already sitting there. You know how long, how many hours, how many days it would take you to write 50? When you can do that probably in an hour? Come on. So that's the, the macro kind of wealth strategy to play this game that turns, that gamifies your, uh, turning your business right now into a cash machine to get to that financial freedom. Does everybody got that? It's just about confidence. Cash reserve? It's just about confidence? Well, so. It's about a lot of things. It's, it's, risk, it's risk management too. It's risk management. And I'm about to get into that. I'm glad you asked me that. I'm about to get into that piece here. It, it's, it's about confidence. It's about risk management. It's about bulletproofing um, well, your business and your life. So if something were to happen, it's not catastrophic for you, right? It gives you confidence. Yeah, yeah. Peace of mind is invaluable, guys. It, that's what I'm saying. So, like, so the fact that you have that, my point is the fact that you have that. So when you ask, is cash reserves just confidence? Like, it's not just that. Look at you. You can afford to take a trip, and I'm not, not I mean, I'm no timber, like, I'm not trying to, no, but, like, cool. but like, you can afford to do a couple of things without you really, back to the sense of urgency, right? When your back's against the wall, it's like, dude, forget the word assets, forget the word cash reserve, forget the word profit, I gotta pay my bills, <laughs> right? Like, the terrible plum tree looking thing up there, you can't even think about yes. this shit right now. Because you like thinking about, oh, snap, I gotta pay the mortgage, or I'm gonna need a victory. <laughs> Like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's you the go, desperation thing. When people do things out of desperation. To the palm tree, little by little. But that's, it's, it's that deal. Now, a lot of companies, right, when they're about to hit the fan, it's because maybe they did it right, and then COVID happens, and all the cash reserves are gone. So, you, you I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you you got to get it right. So, there's a saying that the, 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 thing, uh, the thing about business isn't, there's no, there's no, no end to it. It's to, it's to, you get, you play the game, to continue to play the game. Does that make sense? Like that's the thing, okay? And when you have those things that I said, it allows you to continue to play the game even if something would happen because you got a cash machine, but sometimes if there's a delay, something happens, but you know, you got things coming in, you got stuff coming in for the month or renewals or whatever it is, like allowing that to happen um, kind of mitigates your risk. So with those three levels, there's some, go ahead. Um, and that's the confidence thing. But when you can't pay your bills and you're about to go hungry and you can't pay your rent, you start to have this desperation, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, all of sudden, and all of a sudden people are like, ugh. Yeah. No, we don't want it's needy things, right? Like, it, like even if somebody genuinely needs your help, like you just get that little thing where it's needy. Like, hey, man, what's up? Like, Duke, uh, you know, you just like, it just like creeps you, right? You know, like he may genuinely need it, but it's so needy that it's just like, it just kind of turns you off a little bit. So... Um, in saying this, so I'm gonna wrap this part up. So that first part is like a macro wealth strategy, right? And so with the thing, like he said, life insurance, the first thing you wanna try to do is you wanna uh, manage risk, right? And uh, so obviously one of the first ones is life insurance, right? To make sure you have something just in case something were to happen. Um, then you wanna try to, you wanna have some disability insurance. And this one is important too, is like the three to six months bills, right? Something where it happened, you wanna start working towards some of these things. And then, you know, paying down debt. And a lot of people kind of go to this one first, but guess what? <laughs> you can die, the debt's gonna be there. It's like these things are going here. You can start working through these things where if you have some debt, it's, it's fine, but it's not life or death. But if something catastrophic were to happen, these things could really just like take you out. And so what I always recommend like is um, getting a little bit of this 
And then obviously trying to make sure that you, you start working on this, even just getting one month. Like if you have nothing, like the first thing is just get in a month. And the thing is, is your confidence is going to go as soon as you have this, right? You're going to want to try to get that another, the next one and, that, and the next one. And people may have this and this may seem like dur, but I just feel like I just kind of need to, to, to kind of talk through some of this. This is just like risk management, just talking about like building a solid foundation, life insurance, disability, three to six months, and then debt, paying down debt. Right. And so these is kind of the risk management stage, just taking care of the, the bare necessities. So something were to happen. Yeah, I got a little bit of this. So I could take some time off because, you know, you know how it is with this business, like three months. And then you got three to six months here. It kind of gives you a one way. So, you know, you might have a year to to like to to bounce back from this. And that's kind of what that does. Right. And then the next thing is once you have these, it's like going up the wealth ladder. This is the wealth. Uh, da, 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 accumulation, wealth accumulation. And this is where you start to, um, you trade. So you want to, so money is debt, right? And it has a certain value. And what you want to do with money is you want to transfer money in exchange for something else that's going to uh, raise the value in the future. That is what investing basically is. So I got $1. I want to try to put my $1 into something that in the future, when I exchange it, is going to be worth $1.20, right? Does that make sense? And so this is that wealth accumulation phase where, again, um, you know, a lot of vehicles in here, which I probably already know some of this stuff, 401ks, 403bs, stocks, uh, another business, crypto, what else I have on here? REITs, IULs, and IRAs, right? These are some of the vehicles to um, invest money, all right, so that you can accumulate wealth. Is everybody with me on that? Yeah. And then the last piece is <laughs> wealth distribution, right? And this is. The will and trust. My, uh, my charts are the wrong way around. <laughs> will, the, the will and trust here. I distribute no wealth. So I had a friend who, who mom passed away and um, he had like access to her accounts and like all of this stuff. But they had to do, um, so like it's pretty technical and I don't want to get into it. But like if you have a will, that there's a certain stipulation that like when you pass, like it could be nullified when you pass, like it's a living will, right? So when you pass, like he had to go through a lot of things. And so having a trust in place for your estates, obviously that's very important when you got kids and stuff like that. And we all put this stuff on the back burner um, and I need to kind of do some of this stuff myself, but I just feel that kind of going over some of this stuff, even if it is basic and it kind of reminds you like, this is kind of a, the, the micro wealth strategy here. Um, risk management, so if something were to happen, right, like you got your bases covered just to play the game or one more day, then wealth accumulation, how are you taking this money to make you more money in the future, exchanging it for something in the future that's going to grow, and then what are you going to do with the kind of distributed, if something were to happen, like you gotta, getting things planned out, um, and that's kind of a bulletproof way um, to, to look at not just business, but personal stuff as well, so um, hopefully um, that was helpful to you all. Good stuff. Really good stuff. Dude, I, uh, so I, I think I told Eric, I don't remember, but when I, first time I came over, we went over something like this. And when we bring people into the business, like I wish we did like more stuff like this during some of our trainings, right? Because I'm like, dude, this teaches me how to be a business owner. I mean, you can do it myself, of course, right? But like, what's the problem that we have with a lot of people that come into our business? We money up, management. We a bunch of money, we like buy leads, close the leads, and then they make money, and what happens? Well, dude, it's, 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 we're, we're, we're laughing about we're laughing about this script, you know, financially literate. I mean, that's I mean, and the sad thing is, most of our, I mean, I'm I'm grateful my dad did teach me a lot of this stuff, but most of our dads don't teach us this stuff, you know, they don't teach us this stuff in school. Yeah, I had to learn this kind of like from a mentor it's thing. Crazy, it's crazy, yeah, and, and so you have to have somebody in your life that'll speak it into you, you know, and it should be us. I agree. Like that's really. But in order to speak it into you, so also you have to be doing it. You know, yeah. There's so many people that are just like armchair quarterback. Like, oh, here's what I would do. And it's like, bro, you're broke, man. Yeah. Uh, 
And that's the number one thing I'm saying about this status thing is like, I only stand up here to kind of teach or not even teach, but I'm just, I'm sharing things that I'm doing. And that's the only way you get the depth of knowledge is from doing it, right? And so I'm just kind of walking through the things that I do myself, not coming out somewhere I read out of the book. It's like, okay, implementing some of this stuff. And I learned it somewhere, but again, I'm actually implementing it um, clearly. So this is kind of that strategy. Hopefully y'all got something out of this, it wasn't too elementary. And I think that that's gonna wrap up for today. So just really quickly, uh, just to get some feedback from you guys. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. What's like one thing that y'all kind of got out of today um, that you kind of enjoyed the most or like something that stood out to you guys? Just curious. This part actually for me, just because again, like no one teaches this. I'm a little younger than you know you guys, so you guys have a lot more knowledge than I do on these certain things and these aspects. So I appreciate everyone just chipping in because it's it does go a long way. You know, and I got quick, immediate uh, game plan that I want to implement get ahead on certain of these things too, so. The focus thing that I implemented, you know, um, waking up in the, uh, uh, in the morning and yeah. checking things that aren't, uh, uh, that aren't positive, but then also the, the distractions throughout the entire day that pull you away from money-making activities and stuff like that. And I don't know, I've, I've known that I need to do it, you know, I just haven't pulled the trigger, so it's just like with uh, Jerry and I talking, you know, yesterday, like I, I've been pondering on closing down the office for a couple of days, and Jerry's like, you should do it. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it now. <laughs> yeah. Good. Again, it's like, I'm not trying to tell you guys, we're all grown, we already know what we should do, but this is just a good reminder and an affirmation of like, it's a, it's a good idea to do that, right? It's in your best interest to close that down. Like, you could be doing something else with that, clearly, right? It's $50,000 in premium. Yep. No brainer, right? Cool. All right. Well, hopefully, you know, this today was just the beginning. We're going to go have some fun in a little bit, but that'll kind of wrap up today's session. I appreciate y'all listening. Thank you.